Right, there's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, I've just had a, a, a message off a guy called Keith, or Kevin, I think it's Keith or Kevin, it doesn't really fucking matter. He was wallowing on about Del Boy going, fucking Del, Del Boy doesn't say this. So we were talking about that bearing, and I take the piss saying that bearings, don't expect bearings to go in half by hand, and then whatever. Take some grease, and because this is going to be a metal to metal, interface I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of grease around the outside I'm going to uh, say two words to you right now I, I want you to listen to them very very carefully then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them in into your life well, so I uh, write them down well it, if it makes you comfortable it's just two words most we find most people can uh, can remember them <laughs> okay you ready Yes. Okay, you're there. Stop it! But not on the bottom face because I don't want uh, it from preventing from squishing right down. I'm just going to put a very tiny amount of grease around the outside, just a smear, just to get it moving when we start tapping it in. And it doesn't go in with any force. Uh, there may be people out there thinking, oh, I was told you need a press for this. You don't need a press for this. Right, so get it lined up. And you can get that much with your hands because there's two stages to the hole. The hole that's there is the bottom bit that holds the bearing. Then the top bit above the bearing is a little bit less. Del Boy's situation with his bike, if you have a, a circlip, basically what you have is you have a hole like so. And then you have your bearing seat or the ledge in a sense that sits there and then what he has is he has a groove for a circuit now this is greatly exaggerated so it's easy to see and then there's a relief for that the reason why is is if this this is your bearing diameter here this is the same size it's actually a bit smaller because it's an interference fit so i should say it's smaller and your bearing has to fit inside here so if i put the bearing race like this oh fucking hell it's doing it upside down and then your bearing will sit here like this. It's obviously a bit thicker than this, but you get what I mean. So like that, and then your ball sit in between like so. Like that. Now you don't want to push this bearing down the whole thing, so they put a relief in, because this is a clearance. Generally you know, a seal goes in here, and then your uh, circlip can go in there like that, and then you can have a lip seal like this. that goes in here and seals against just here. Whatever size the shaft is, like I say, this isn't an accurate, depiction of what's going on but it gives you the idea so there's your seal there and like I say what they do is they have a relief so you can get your bearing down to where it needs to seat so you can have this interference fit so I was also talking about putting grease um, putting grease on these on the outside bearing race do not do that no matter what fucking this Kev Keith knobhead says or Dell says do not butter <laughs> do not basically oil the outside of your bearings the whole point of these bearings is that this center section can rotate so the inner race can rotate in this example your bearings can rotate they it's all good they can rotate as well but your outer race is meant to stay static right and it is meant to be a press fit it is meant to be a metal on metal um, contact that's what press fits are so he said oh no if you look at the manual that you've got in front of you it tells it actually tells you to do this no it doesn't you fucking knob right so here i've blown up some sections of our um of the sv manual and as you can see there's a little thing here that says a which is suzuki's what's it say suzuki's bearing steering oh that's the oh there we are so it says here suzuki's super grease super slippy it's got a number there number a and it's us and it just gives you different numbers part numbers if they are different numbers in different countries as you can see there what you can see here keith kev whatever your fucking name is is that they're putting this finger here is sticking grease into the bearings this is what we call bearing packing or greet you know, packing a bearing so that's what they're showing you how to do. It says nothing about the outside. And if you look at this diagram here, we know what this grease is. And what you can see, and I'll just pull you in a tiny bit. There we go, just so we get a bit more of a fuller picture so you can see what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, what you can see here is that we have 
a bearing with a line that basically points to the ball like this and it also points to the inside of the seal on the oil seal here 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 and the balls themselves it is saying pack the bearings with grease and apply a bit to the inside now he says it says grease not oil for the lip seal oil grease anything that just basically stops that oil seal from gripping the steel and then when you rotate it, it stops it from tearing and damaging and leaking now in our actual sv one of the problems and i'll actually go and print that out because this is the front wheel right then so what we've got here is a printout of our uh, rear wheel for the um, sv and this is what i was talking about these e numbers here for either you have a castellated nut with a split pin or you have the basically the locking nut um, that you've seen so what the hell went wrong here so our wheel alignment our um, sprocket carrier is this bit here right and it's held in by or it's basically tracked on this um, entire setup so it's all floating the only way it's attached is by the clamping load of this spacer bearing that inner spacer thing with the two sides the one with the big scratch we saw the inner race of this wheel bearing the tube in the middle the inner race of this bearing the other spacer and then the caliper carrier and then the swing arm and then it's all been forced together all is good so when this bearing shits the bed all it means is that our car our carrier just wobbles around like this on our actual spacers and shaft combo the whole thing just wobbles around and it's having a shit day the bearings inside here that lock this wheel to this shaft has been bending this whole thing's been doing this how do we know this well because our disc has been rubbing on our carrier and because it's been rubbing on our carrier that's how i noticed anything had ever gone wrong so our symptoms are squeaky brakes uh, hot rear brake intermittent side loading blah 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 when we looked at the pads from our original uh, our pads that we took out of our caliper you could see they were all chewed up and gnarly and not very flat and smooth and just shit there's burrs on the disc and we could feel the disc i have actually measured the disc the disc is pretty much flat so it survived it but we've got a new one anyway just in case but what's happened here well what's happened here is this bearing here at our carrier the one we saw with all the balls um to one side and the shell had gone everywhere has shit the bed now this system is a bit strange because what you do is you have let me get a different color you have an oil seal here and an oil seal here if i bring you in a bit this because we don't need all of it so there we go we've got an oil seal here an oil seal here and this is stopping shit from outside getting in maybe if you use a different color that might help so this is stopping shit getting in from outside right this that's what this oil seals jobs there to do and this stops your bearings shitting the bed corroding and stuff like that on the other side of this bearing right here it's a bit difficult to see but right there is the shielded part of the bearing now when i put the replacement bearing in it was double shielded and i left the shields on because there's no reason why not to have them yes it emits this um uh, it emits this oil seal a bit but it's good think of it as double protection the other thing is as well as our bearings here our wheel bearings have an oil seal this side are basically facing outwards so the entire tube and everything is now sealed from the outside world all is good and gravy and then they put an oil seal on here just to probably just back that up um, I think these are meant to have oil seals I'll actually have to look through the manual um, of these bearings I know the ones that I've got as replacements have double oil seals uh, double seals on either side regardless it doesn't matter I think that there's a seal on one of these sides because it does say try and pack the bearings when you do it if you get the uh, Suzuki um, OEM bearings the same bearings just in a different packet but anyway so what's happened to this well our wheel bearings we need to take them out but I'm promising you right now they are fucked because I can see down inside them um, I can see down past because now we've taken all this out I can see into the bearings and they have um, which actually means probably they don't have a seal on now I think about it but I can see into the bearings and the shit the fucked um, but anyway what happens here actually yeah these bearings I'll take that back these bearings must be not sealed so no seal and I'm writing this upside down so you have to bear with me 
No seal, I imagine, now I think about it. I haven't had a really good look at them, you can't see it says no seal there. <laughs> um, or, or. So basically what's happened is, is that this entire system is sealed by this bearing, uh, this oil seal and this oil seal. This stops oil getting in. So what's happened to this bearing cage is this bearing cage has shit the bed, right? And there's only enough room in there for a nice complete shell. So in a sense there's room, that's your distance of your bearings inside. There's room for the balls and there's room for the cages when they are in one part with the rivets and then the next cage kind of thing, if you get what I mean. There's only room for this all to be like this complete. When this breaks and it starts to you know, intrude into all the other regions. So that's what's happened is this shell has broken here and it's basically started to spin around inside our oil seal and it's ground away that oil seal. We can see that because the oil seal is missing its centre section so the cross section of the oil seal is kind of like this. So this is where your spring goes and all the rest of it. You can't see that. That's where your spring goes and all the rest of it and all this has gone because it's all rubber. That's not supported by steel. There's a, it's impregnated steel inside there but not the rest of it. We can see that from our old fuck bearing. So the cage is broken, it's been rattling around inside here and it's basically shred the inside of the seal, the lip seal section of this seal away. This means, um, well that it's fucked, but it also means that water can now get in, get past the bearing and get at the wheel bearings. So this has shit the bed first, the carrier bearing has shit the bed first, it's destroyed the oil seal. Uh, or just the seal, but it, yeah, they generally call them oil seals. All the shit and water and stuff from outside has been able to pass through this bearing because it's got holes in it, it's not a problem. It's managed to go through the entire thing. Now, you might think, well, there's that other shielded bearing seal there, but if you saw it was all bloated was the back of that seal, and I'm sure you'll be able to get water through it. So water's passed, ingressed into this bearing, and it's fucked our main bearings, our wheel bearings. So this has happened first, a lot earlier, then winter happened and it's got at the bearings and then these bearings have started to go wear out and go shit and corrode which has allowed our wheel to start wobbling and start rubbing on our bearing carrier. So this begs the question what happened to our uh, cage? Well cages fail for quite a few reasons generally the tolerances aren't tight enough it's just shit happens in that bearing maybe the rivets aren't up to it maybe there's a misalignment with the cage which means that the ball um, is going to ride basically weirdly inside the kit weirdly it's not going to run true inside the cage um, the other thing is as well is that if you put undue stress by accelerating and then not accelerating and this could be it, it could be basically the fact that the SV has been accelerating and then it's engine braking which reverses the torque and, and so on and so forth and it's basically just shit but that's all that's happened um, it might be just a bad bearing maybe it's a shit one in there as in um, out of a batch of a million, maybe this was the one or two or five or ten that shit the bed early. You know, maybe the riveting wasn't brilliant or something like that. Just a manufacturing flaw. So like I say, this bearing then chewed up everything locally around it, which includes this spacer which we saw. Also chewed up the inside of this um, seal so we could literally see inside. So there was no sealing going on. Then the weather and the elements got in and attacked um, our wheel bearings, probably this one as well. You wouldn't believe how well water can um, migrate through all these things. Um, this seal, we need to look at the quality of this seal as well. Maybe this seal went as well, maybe both of them shit the bed. But as far as I can see at the moment, until we get the wheel bearings out, um, that's basically what happened. So people are asking, you know, why do cages fail? Um, acceleration, deacceleration, vibration, so a lot of the things that happen in your actual um, carrier and all the rest of it, the back end, your power end of your bike. Hope that makes sense. Um, like I say, these, it could be bangs on saying, in the manuals it says, no it fucking doesn't, it says nothing about applying grease to the outside, you can see there, them arrows say nothing about applying it to the outside and here it shows you clearly well, clearly-ish, but it's basically saying packing the bearings. Apply grease to the wheel bearings. It doesn't really, it's not that specific, but that's what it means. And this is what you're taught when you go and become a mechanic or whatever, or an engineer or something like that. Strangely enough. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.